sadly, something that definitely would have made my indictment of the gaming industry and what I think is rather grotesque is uh, we have the Dishonored Dev Team. Didn't play your game, guys, and you're really making me not want to play your game with your attitudes. Just saying. Dishonored devs say that games don't create violence, but they don't prevent it either. I'm going to read their actual argument, and then I'm going to allow you to read the rest of the article, and basically myself, I'm going to say that I'm sorry, but this is stupid. So, does this mean that linear violent games are better for society than those like Dishonored? those that touch only significantly on violent acts versus those that allow the player to make extreme choices. I argue that linear games that have a lack of personal ownership in game violence actually do so at the disadvantage of society. Care to back that up? Oh, right. Doom, which is a linear violent game, must have been the cause of all sorts of massacres, including what was the one they tried to tie it to? Oh yeah, Columbine. Except, oh wait, no, that's right, there is no link. I don't believe that violent video games cause real world violence. That's not exactly what you're saying here, though. But I do believe that it does little to prevent it. Um, how? And games with meaningful and potentially distasteful choices just might do better than they, uh, because they stand a chance of making the player think about what they are doing on screen. So let me take the, the often used comment against another type of media, pornography. People have often said that pornography incites people. It leads rapists to rape, despite the fact that even in something as disgusting as child pornography uh, cases, most cases of, of things like searching for child porn happen after a crime has been committed, not before. But by this logic and by this reasoning, we could say, well, porn doesn't create or doesn't incite real-world rape, but it doesn't prevent it. Do you even know why rapists rape? But moreover, do you even know why violent criminals act like violent criminals? What does violence in a video game have to do with a socioeconomic conditioning? What does violence in a video game have to do with a person's epigenetics as well as genetic markers within them that if a mutation occurs in conjunction with a bad home environment, how does the violent video game factor into any of that? Because let me, let me give my, myself as an example here. A very good example, I think, but not, not the end-all be-all. That would be a logical fallacy on myself. <clears throat> From when I started school until age 14, when I moved away from a particular community, I was bullied by gangs of people in my school. Eventually, the school just stopped trying to help me out. And these bullies, they didn't get any consequences. I tried to go to the school. They didn't do anything. Uh, eventually, I tried to defend myself. And guess who got in trouble? I did. I got consequences for my violence against the people who were being violent against me. And then, on top of that, the bullies, who were bad, sore losers, came at me harder and just basically made it to where I just had to sit there and take it because they were real life giving violence against me, and they had no consequences against it. The community didn't care. Boys will be boys. They're doing a service. They're toughening up little old me. Never mind the circumstances of my life that, that hurt my... Uh, self-esteem before I was ever bullied and the fact that that stuff didn't help 
I grew up in the 80s through the 90s, a time period that had some of the most violent movies and, of course, some of the most violent video games. That, compared to, what, Take Away 5 for the, uh, you know, time that kids start school, nine-plus years worth of physical and emotional abuse, not to mention my oldest brother coming to live with us after my younger brother died, or my older brother died, middle brother died, and he bullied me at home. I should be an extremely violent person. I should have problems with, with uh, keeping myself together. I should be doing so much worse than I am, and I'm not. Okay? I've heard it all, but this this is stupid. This is stupid because this ignores every other factor that would go into those scant few. And I, re I recommend saying the key word there is few who violent media would have any effect on whatsoever. When I was watching that media, I never looked at it as oh, this hero is resorting to violence first, or this hero is uh, going right for the violence. I always understood, in their cases, that they had tried everything they could to thwart the bad guys, and when that failed, they used violence. The number of times that similar situations have come up in my life, big fat zero if you don't count the bullying situation there, in which case I learned that if I fight back, not only do I get in trouble and they get off the hook, but then they come at me harder. So therefore, at least in my personal case of bullying, fighting back was the worst thing that I could do because I got in trouble and I continued to be abused by the kids at that school. You want to talk about a school failing to protect its students. I could tell you about a school failing to protect its students. Same thing with rape, though. I get so sick of this this whole, well, we teach young girls not to get raped it, rather than teaching the boys not to rape. Because, you know, women can't rape, right? Although, actually, I'll get to that in a later video tonight. Um, you know, every time, whether it was poorly represented or not, I understood that the rapist was a bad Person. What they were doing was not right, it was not glamorous, it was not glorious, and it was not fun for anybody outside of the rapist, and even then, he usually got caught, killed, or what have you. I have understood, even when rape is poorly represented in media, that it is bad. And because I don't have the proclivity to rape, I could watch a positive rape story, and it's not going to cause me to rape. It's not going to incite me, a normally adjusted person, which that's a miracle in and of itself, to rape. So no, I'm sorry, Dishonored Devs. You fail. If anything, you're trying to capitalize on this moment, being disingenuous and trying to be like, not trying to toot our own horn or anything, but... I think our game is the best way to go, you know. Just saying, you know, you could, you could sneak past, or you could send a plague of rats after these guys and then explode them with uh, one of our weapons or stab them with our many weapons or shoot them. But we're the good guys because we give you a choice. Because, no, no, I'm sorry. I've never played a game where they just simply threw me into an arena, said, hey, this is violence, you know, go do it. It's, it's the best thing ever. It's the sol It will solve all of your problems. It is the answer to every problem. Don't like your boss? Cut his head off. Don't like how that hooker treated you? Run her over with your car and steal your money back, you know. No! What the hell is wrong with you? I have grown up with games from from little boxes that were representative of entire imaginary people and armies to photorealistic type graphical games. 
my son is much the same. He can get mad because he has a lot of his mom inside of him, but you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't get violent. And he plays violent video games. Again, I can't use myself or my son as absolute proof of anything. That would be a logical fallacy on my part, and I concede to that. But saying that these games somehow still have a part to play in violence is ignorant, to say the least. There is no link that has yet been found. And if you're going to stand up there and act like you have the moral high ground, Dishonored Devs, well, you can just screw right off.